Welcome to IBMI DevOps Tech Talk, where we discuss key topics and questions with ARCAD experts. Today we'll talk about what DevOps is and how you can get there. Our experts today are Andrew Clark, he's our DevOps Product Manager, and Alan Ashley, he's a Senior Solutions Architect. My name's Ray Bernardi, I'm also a Solutions Architect here at ARCAD Software, and I'll be your moderator today. All right, well, thanks for joining us here today, guys. So, Andrew, why don't you start for us? Exactly what is DevOps? Thank you, Ray. Uh, so, DevOps really, the um, there's a lot of complicated explanations for it if you look at it on the web, but really what we're talking about is DevOps is a way to take manual processes that you're doing today, um, things that people are doing, running certain kinds of scripts, or just clicking buttons on screens, and turning that into an automated um stream of actions right so once a certain thing happens all of these actions are kind of triggered on the back end by certain toolings or processes um the really the idea is is that you want to eliminate the need for people to do manual work that they don't frankly want to do um, both developers and, and qa in, in many cases both the the dev and the ops side of devops right um things like filling out forms or going into meetings to explain why certain things aren't working or why certain process is broken and automate that um, in, a, in a cycle um, so that uh, basically the computer is checking those things for you. And uh, the end result is that you get um, quicker releases, smaller releases, right? Usually smaller releases um, to the users with better code quality and the most important thing is actually at a lower cost. Okay, now when you say smaller releases to the user, you're not, I mean, we already took that step with Agile, didn't we? Or is it, is it even beyond that? Yeah, there's a difference between Agile and DevOps. So in Agile, there are, there are small incremental releases, um, but you only do testing at a certain point, right? So you do, you do small releases, but you kind of build up all of the testing into a, into a bucket. And then at some point you test that entire bucket all at the same time. In DevOps, what actually happens, and I've got a little chart for it, but no one can see it, is you actually do not only the, 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 the coding and the testing, but you also do um, the deploy all, all, in, all in the same step, right? So Agile builds up a bunch of these little releases and then you run the test all at once and then you deploy at the back end of that whole thing. In DevOps, you're continuously deploying, right? So that's, that's the difference is you're continuously right. deploying as, as everything passes the test case, it just goes right into production, right? So that's, that's really the difference between Agile and DevOps. All right, so that covers what is DevOps. So why DevOps? Alan, you want to start here? So, and this goes back to the old, you know, return on investment, the RI calculators that are out there, because what is every business decision made on? Money. Money. Money drives the decision. And so when you start looking at why DevOps, you've got to look at what is your, gonna, your return going to be? Now, Andrew, as a developer, how can working through and maybe on this ROI calculator with your uh, business team, how can you start to DevOps out of that? Well, well, the biggest thing is that um, again, this is this is what we call shift left, right? So, so the 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 important thing is that um, you can find defects, you can find issues in in, in new code or in, in fixed code, any kind of change code as quickly as possible. So, as a developer, you don't want to push a change that has a bug in it. Obviously, when you're making the change, you don't think there's a bug, but if you don't run any test cases, if you don't thoroughly test your application, then someone else is gonna have to find that bug and, and it complicates the process. Um, it becomes very expensive because not only is it taking up your time, but it's taking up a QA resource time. Plus also, whenever you move something within the cycle from development to testing, there's different people and just different processes involved. So that's slow. And there's often some kind of manual process. And that's what I talked about before, right? There's some bug. Okay, so I got to fill out a form. Oh, I got I to gotta 
um, contact the developer now, right? This is the QA person. I've got to contact the developer, find out if this is a bug, right? And then the developer is going to be like, oh, yeah, that's a bug. Okay. So I've got to check off my little checklist and then I got to mm. pull my code back, right? So it's a huge manual drain of time for someone to catch something that a machine could be checking, right? That test case could have run automatically or the developer even could have run it from within his own development workspace. Um, before it even got to that human being that's that's running their their test cases as well. So why why are you going through all these manual processes that cost time and money um, when you can have a, a, a pipeline that that does all that checking for you automatically? So this is so DevOps really is really about automating and making these, that that shift left and finding this stuff early. Yep. And, yep. Yeah. And not not only is it ROI, but the other thing is that no one wants to do the manual processes, right? I mean, if mm. if if your pipeline can check it and find that, then you're not wasting time filling out forms or getting on the phone and trying to track down Joe, you know, who's out to lunch or whatever, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. yeah. So I mean, no one wants to do any of that stuff. They want to, you know, coders want to code, and QA people want to do. Um, you know, they want to do exploratory testing. They don't want to sit there and follow a script and, you know, push buttons like monkeys, right? They right, want to do right. original things. They want to use their brains. And manual processes kill all of that. It kills developer productivity, it kills QA productivity. And it, the bottom line, like Alan said, is it just costs you money, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the biggest thing, you know, that that a lot of people don't realize is, is DevOps. A lot of people in the IBM I world is that DevOps is in... It's it's almost an old science at this point. It's a it's been around for close to two decades, and right, six, right. sixty percent of the IT world um, is what they consider higher elite performers. That means that they're doing multiple deployments either per day or per hour, and their entire DevOps pipeline. So all of their testing is close to or at a hundred percent automated. And um, when when the IBM I people see that and they haven't even started down that DevOps path, they realize how far they are behind. Mm -hmm. And the biggest point is, is even in this IBM I space, there's other people. I mean, we have customers that are doing that and your competitors are doing this. They're not wasting all that time on manual processes. They're saving mm -hmm. that money and then reinvesting it in other projects. You're falling behind the curve when you're not doing this. Every day that you're not doing DevOps, you're losing money, you're losing productivity, you're losing competitive status. All right, so we talked about what is DevOps and we know why DevOps. So how do I get to DevOps? Yeah, so that's 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 a great question. And that's one of the things that I think stops most people is they're, they're worried about how to start it. And uh, I think, Ray, you've said this before, the hardest part is really just taking that first step, right? Yep. So deciding that you're actually going to go down this path is often the hardest thing. And what I'll say is that actually the the very first step isn't really difficult. It's just it's just collecting information, right? So you need to figure out your existing systems. Um, if you are anything other than a one or two person shop, you probably have both IBM I developers and um, you know what we call open open systems developers people that might be doing java or .NET or php or vb mm -hmm. or some mm -hmm. other language right like that right and mm -hmm. i i bet that those other people are probably doing some kind of DevOps process maybe not a full they, pipeline they, are, they already have that mindset though they yeah. already have that mindset yeah and mm -hmm. what you'll also find is that people fresh out of college younger younger developers will 100% have this knowledge, right? So that that will be burned into them from the very beginning. It's so they're the culture they grew up in. Basically. It's the culture they grew up. It's just it's yeah. just assumed, right? I mean, even yeah. even if they were hobbyists at home, they've they understood this entire process because it, it drives the world, right? I mm -hmm. mean, um, the whole DevOps process is kind of really actually driven honestly by the by the by Linux and and um, you know that that ecosystem drives you know you know the most popular operating system in the world for web kind of development. Um, it's all based around kind of this DevOps cycle because there's just, mm. you know, there's millions of people involved in it, right? So anyway, um, so the, the biggest thing though is you can, you know, they've, they've got that mindset and you probably have that experience and knowledge somewhere already in your in your company. Mm -hmm. um, leverage that, right? You know, take advantage of it. Oh, there, sure, are yeah. so, there are some times where the, where the um, workflow 
for for the open systems is different than the IBMI, but a lot of times they have great knowledge and they'll have great ideas, right? And they can they can share that knowledge. And if you can figure out which tooling you have and and existing workflow, um, and you need to really establish the culture of of you know your your different silos, your your IBMI guys, your RPG guys, and your Java guys actually working together, right? I mean that's mm. that's that's kind of a mindset change and a cultural change. That's important to kind of kind of agree on, so that you can, you know, before you even move forward, agree on how you want this process to work. You can, you know, there's some technical details about different repositories in the back end and all those kinds of things and, and build systems, right? And you can you can get all that and then and that actually is kind of a great first step just to bring your different teams together. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground, but you know, you've talked about automation again and again. Um, what kind of tools are out there? Can RCAD help with some of these tools. Alan, Andrew, you guys want to cover that? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I mean, I want to reiterate, reiterate again that it's not just tooling that we're talking about, but the really the the mindset and the process. That's 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 an important critical first step. But the tooling is, is important too. And obviously, if you can consolidate your tooling across your IBMI and your open source, your non-IBMI projects, that's really important. So in the DevOps space, the, the big tools that you think about are, are Git for source control, right? And if you have a, a ticket or issue system, obviously Jira Atlassian um, is, a huge, is a huge tool, which is linked with Bitbucket, which is kind of the, the Atlassian version of Git. Um, we have many customers that are using that tooling um, and GitHub. Obviously, both on-prem and cloud-based. Yep. GitLab, yep. GitLab has a partnership with IBM, so there's there's yep. a real good relationship. You can actually run GitLab on your power systems, the same system you're running on your IBMI. Um, the other the other big one we see a lot is Azure, Azure DevOps, Azure Azure Pipe. Um, pipelines, right? So we uh, we have we have integration with with all of that tooling, um, as well as tools like. Um, Sonar Cube and Sonar Type, right? So those are things that actually check for code defects, right? So you make sure okay. that your code doesn't have any kind of vulnerabilities in them, right? Any kind of exposure. So that's all part of the pipeline. So those those are all tools that are out there already um, that you may have heard of, and we've got integration with all of those. But right, the, and you know, you mentioned all these tools, and we can't be remiss without mentioning that how ArcHead works with. Every tool that you mentioned uh, through some shape, form, or fashion, for example, you mentioned Sonar Cube. We have, you know, it ties into our uh, testing with Code Checker, you know, so we can, you know, slide right in there and help from that aspect. But each area that you're talking about, whether you're, you know, a GitHub or a GitLab shop or an Azure shop, one of the things that's behind the scenes that you don't hear a lot about is you have to build it. And this is really where ARCAD comes in, right? You know, we have the ability to take what was done in Git through, you know, different approaches of, was it a push out or was it a merge that triggered an event? Well, this event talks to Builder and Builder makes sure that your IBM I code gets developed correctly. Yeah. Because Git has know, no idea what a physical file yeah, is. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. a text, I think somebody said it's basically a text file okay. to Git. Yeah. That's all get, it sees. Get sees so text. That's all it knows about, right? The scenes. Yep. Now the biggest the biggest thing um, for the IBMI guys this seems obvious, but for the non IBMI guys it's a completely different world. And most of these systems are designed around non IBMI, and you can't do a build for IBMI objects without doing it correctly, right? So on the IBMI it has unique characteristics that are completely different than every other platform. All the Java guys and the .NET guys will just have no idea what you're talking about. On the I, you got to build physical files first, then you got to worry about reference files, then you got to worry about modules, then you have to worry about service programs, then you have That's... to worry about views, and then you have to worry about logic files, right? I mean, it's just all of these layers that are really complicated that have to be done in a certain order that what are about IBM you'd be script in this, right? This you'd, like be writing it all about, you'd be writing it all out by hand. You'd have to figure out all those relationships. And if someone added something new and you forgot about it, your make file, your script isn't yeah. going to work anymore, right? So the 
auto magic of, of ARCAD is that no matter what change you make, you can never forget about something or lose something or propagate something and cause a level check and bring your production system down because ARCAD checks all of that automatically. And that's, and that's really the beauty of it is that no matter what tooling you decide to use, you've got to have something that really understands the specifics of the IBMI. And ARCAD is, is the only tool that has that integration level um, throughout the throughout the entire DevOps line, right? We're talking about yeah. the, the code checker and the I unit and the IBM IA, uh, the build, the arcade builder, right? All of these things and even the deployment step is crucial. You know, and every other platform, when you do a rollback, you're just talking about deleting files or moving files to a different directory. And IBM IA, you can't do that. You gotta you've got to extract them in the exact reverse order. You gotta pull out the logicals before you can do the physicals, all those kinds of things. So it's it's each each step in in your DevOps pipeline has to be completely IBMI aware, and that's where the ARCAD magic really comes in. Thanks, Andrew, and thank you as well, Alan. I think we could probably sit here and talk about this all day, but that's all we're going to have time for today. So, thanks everyone for listening, and for more information please visit our website at www.arcadsoftware.com. <laughs>